Hello everyone, my name is Jamie McQuaid from Magnet Forensics, and today we're going to show you the newly redesigned timeline features in Axiom 3.0. So I've got a case open up, ready to go here. Uh, I've got a few evidence items uh, loaded in. Uh, we can see there's a, a few, an iPhone, a, an Android device, um, some a computer, USB device, a good mix of, uh, of artifacts here. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to first go into the artifacts. And again, very similar to what you, you might uh, expect to see in uh, any given case. You get all the artifacts listed here, um, but we're going to use Timeline. And uh, the first thing you're going to notice is Timeline has moved. Um, we've completely redesigned it. So um, instead of going into the views and looking for Timeline here, which it's no longer there, you'll actually see it under the Explorers right here. Uh, and you can see timelines right at the bottom. Now, the reason for this change is because previously in old uh, versions of timeline, we built out a nice timeline for you, did uh, some good analysis with it, but it was limited to just artifact timestamps, um, which we got a lot of, but it didn't include file system timestamps from other sources or anything like that. So what we've done is we've consolidated timestamps from everywhere, everywhere that uh, Axiom pulls timestamps from, we've uh, brought them into your case, uh, into this new timeline explorer here. So what I do is I would click Click here, it would flip me over to the timeline view. Now, the first time you run this, it's going to have to process, uh, do some post-processing stuff to uh, rebuild a, a timeline database for us. The reason being, it's going to consolidate all the timestamps from the file system, the artifacts and everything. Depending on the size of your case, it shouldn't take too long. I know I find for most of my cases, it only takes a minute or two. Um, if you've got a really, really large case, it may take uh, a little bit longer, but I'm talking about you know five, six million artifacts at that point, um, and it will take uh, a little bit longer. But if you've got a case like this, I think there's only about 400,000 artifacts in this one. It only took a couple of minutes. So once you've uh, built that out, you get the timeline view, you set the date range. Now you can leave the defaults, it's going to do all the timestamps, so basically 1970 to whatever the end timestamp is. Obviously there's no real user activity here, but there may be timestamps that fit within those time frames. So we're going to just hit OK and we've got uh, a, a big long timeline here. So you can see, already notice some changes if you've used the old timeline before. Up the top here, we've got a nice visualization, which you can use a scroll wheel or you can drag across your timeline here and see a nice visual display of all the timestamps and it'll be um, a line graph based on the frequency within that uh, area. So right now we're looking at it per year. So you've got a uh, pretty high level, but you can dive into months, uh, weeks, days and all of that. So you can uh, very easily uh, flip between that and uh, you can very easily zoom in and out uh, or drag along uh, a given time frame. Um, and we'll, we'll get more into that in uh, just a second here. But you can specify your date range again, which maybe I want to get a little bit more specific. I could easily just go in here and uh, change the visualization. Let's just say, you know, January um, 2002 over to January 2020. That's just as a, as a rough uh, time frame here. And again, you can see it starts um, narrowing it in there. So you've got 2002 to 2020. Um, so again, a little bit more realistic, but if you've got a tighter time frame, you can absolutely set that as well. Um, and again, it's uh, it, this is more visual piece to it. Down below, you've got your actual timestamps um, all listed out here, and you're gonna have a single entry for every single timestamp. So if you've got, say, a given file on the file system, and uh, you can uh, you can track that single file down, you're gonna have um, the Mac times associated to the modified access created. If it's NTFS, it's gonna be the MFT modified is with it as well. If it's an artifact, artifacts may have multiple timestamps, so it may have one timestamp just representing, you know, an event, or it could have multiple timestamps, for example, like a prefetch file, which would have the the, uh, the last run date time and the, actually the last eight run date times. So you could have eight timestamps for a prefetch file. And you'll have a single entry for each one, um, which allows you to get really granular with your uh, analysis. So let's uh, let's go, go through an example here and, uh, and kind of take a look at uh, what we've got here. So um, I've done some a quick filter on the view here, but what I can also use is the filters across the top. Um, if you've used the Axiom before, you're probably familiar with the evidence filters. Um, you can choose which data types to show. So whether you wanna show artifacts or files and folders or the file system here, the default is to show both, but if you only wanna look at artifact timestamps or file system timestamps, you can be selective here. 
Obviously, you can filter on uh, it's at a global date time filter, just like you can in Axiom. So that's what we'll do here. I'm just going to pick a date range. And again, you can you can pick anything you want. I'll, I'm just going to, again, pick another one. Maybe we'll say 2004, uh, just so we can get another time frame, time frame in here. And we'll say January to 2018. I don't know. I'll just pick uh, random ones there. Hit go. And it'll apply that filter here and allow us to uh, to narrow in uh, on a particular date and time. Again, you could you could be picking a time frame of just an hour or a day, a week, month. It's it's totally up to you. I'm picking a very broad one for this uh, this example here. So now we've narrowed it down here, and we've got uh, 2004 to to 2018. Um, and you can continue to add other. Uh, filters here, timeline categories. So you'll notice down here, you'll have this column called timeline categories. And this is uh, new for us, but uh, if you've ever taken a SANS course uh, from uh, Rob Lee, you're probably familiar with doing this in Excel or, uh, or other spreadsheets. Um, it allows you to indicate evidence of a user action or user activity. Um, so what you can follow through here, you can see, the, go if I scroll down, you can start to see that color coding that uh, we're quite familiar with. And uh, you can see there's tons of times in this case, so there's a lot of it here, but you can start following through and, and seeing that. You can also filter these. So you can see there's account usage, browser usage, deleted file, device interaction, external USB device, file download, file knowledge, file folder opening, financial transactions, network activity, physical um, locations, program execution, social activity. If there's one that's unknown, you can it's not marked or not labeled, it's in there. Um, user communications or user events. Now, some of those might be familiar to you. Some of them might be new. We decided that we had to add a few additional categories to accommodate a lot of the artifacts that we collected, uh, especially around our chat and social activity. Um, there was a, just a, not enough categories to fill that in. So um, we've built out some of those additional ones. Feel free to reference in the um, documentation or on our blogs the details and maybe some definitions about what those new ones might mean if you're not familiar with them, but most of them are pretty straightforward. So you can filter on that or you can also filter on the tags and comments. Now, we can also run keywords here. So maybe I've got a keyword to kick off here. Um, I know for, for this case, there's uh, it's kind of a, a case study around uh, uh, game design and, and stuff like that called Battle Fighter. So I'm just going to do a quick uh, keyword search for battle. Um, and it'll run through here. Now, this keyword search will take a little bit longer than what you're used to on the file system or the artifact side. This is because it's cutting across two different uh, databases and uh, it's a little different uh, type of keyword search, but it is still pretty quick. And there we go. It's created our uh, timeline and it's filtered based on uh, battle here. So um, let's take a quick look here. So we're starting at the top. Uh, we can see some uh, basic details. You've got obviously the timestamp, which is going to be the main filter or sorting uh, on your uh, your case. You can see what the actual date time represents. So um, there's, that's going to vary across different uh, artifacts and files. You get the category, you get the artifact category and the type of artifacts. So the very first few here are operating system link files and they've got uh, some basic details about it. Now, along the um, right-hand side here, you've got uh, the full details of the file or artifact listed out. So obviously we've got just some basic details about the linked path here, which is the first column, uh, and this is references to Chrome, but you've got three timestamps for this artifact and some additional details that you would find in a link file. Um, so you get full details here, but some brief details sorted into the, uh, the timeline. And you might notice that there's three timestamps for this given artifact. We're only focused on one. We're second on the second one here, but you can filter or you can jump between them. There's three timestamps. So I can see across the top here, here's the one I'm on, but there's a grayed outline here and a grayed line here representing the other, the other two timestamps for that link file. And I can just hit next and it jumps over to that other one, or I could hit back and back again, and it jumps between them. So if you found a given file of interest, uh, something that's uh, exciting or important to your case, and you say, okay, well, that's good. Well, what are all the other timestamps for this uh, file or artifact? That could be really helpful uh, for my case and, and showing me what, uh, uh, what is important. 
Okay, so now additionally, as we scroll down here, we can see there's a few other browsing related stuff, file folder opening evidence, and you can see uh, if they've got a preview, it'll preview uh, the, the, the document pictures. Uh, this one's a Chrome cache record, so it's cached internet uh, history here. Um, and as you scroll down, you can start seeing uh, uh, some, some additional details. We can see right here, we've got a Google search, uh, always, uh, always helpful. The user did a, a search for a battle fighter 2015 you can see the hits for the keyword there. So that's where the bat hits for battle are. And really, I could step through this just like an investigation. And I would actually step through how the user uh, might have gone about their day or their, their actions on this uh, this source evidence. So this isn't just the computer. This is computer, phone, um, whatever evidence sources I've got uh, loaded in here. So we've got the Google searches. We've got Chrome uh, history for the hits here. We've got uh, some also web visits. And we can start seeing that it's got some references to uh, Google Docs here. And we can scroll down and lots of Docs activity. So it looks like they're editing an online document here. We see some actual file activity from the file system. So you got created uh, Mac times, stuff like that. We've got a hit for Outlook um, live.com webmail here. So uh, Chrome, still using Chrome, out, they're accessing Outlook. Uh, we've got some Android Facebook messages here and you'll be able to actually see um, the text message. You can see the reference to uh, Battlefighter and the conversation going on there. And then further, uh, slightly, a little further below, you get the details to it. And again, we're just going to follow through. We've got some user communication, some more details about the chats, back to the browser usage. We've got some uh, uh, cache records from Pinterest. Uh, so the user was looking up special forces details here, probably related to research for their battle fighter game. Uh, and then we can keep going. We're back to the Google Docs. Um, we haven't actually been able to preview the document yet, but if we keep going, we should be able to see that as well. We can see there's a Word document reference and an untitled doc being created. And you can see there's the actual preview of the document. So you get the actual text of it. You get the details from it there as well. And again, back to OneDrive, we've got uh, editing office documents, and we can start seeing some more um, user communication. There's some uh, Android Facebook messages here. Again, conversation going on. Some emails uh, between them. This is the users sharing out uh, over Gmail. The ability to share the Google Docs um, that he was working on. So again, really helpful to investigation. You're starting to track down what was going on. Some more doc activity, and you can see there's uh, additional emails going on. More document browsing activity. So we'll keep scrolling through here. And now you start getting into the OS artifacts. You've got a reference to a PDF document for that file fighter. So I'm assuming the user created a PDF document here. We've got link files referencing the actual PDF. So you've got some additional timestamps around that. Um, you've got uh, Chrome downloads uh, representing the actual PDF being downloaded through Chrome. Uh, jump lists uh, referencing it, uh, more uh, file system timestamps, zone identifier details along with the PDF uh, document there. And uh, like I said, it, it keeps going here and uh, additional details about um, this document. And if it's important, obviously for, for ours, I ran the search that I kind of knew what I was looking for, but you can see we've got uh, a Word document and this is going even further with a resignation letter for the user, all with the uh, ties to the, the Battle Fighter uh, video game that he was creating here. So again, very nice visual way to step through this. And, and as we go through it, we could be bookmarking all of this uh, very easily. You know, we create bookmarks um, either just like you were, uh, you wouldn't anywhere else in Axiom. You can go through and uh, create those bookmarks very easily. Add remove tag, add bookmark, and we can see those being created. There we go. And we'll go through and uh, just put a few link files in there. I'm just going to bookmark a few documents and stuff that could be important for our case here. And there's some references of Outlook and some more PDFs. Again, lots of good timeline activity here. Some jump list in there and uh, away we go. So assuming we've identified everything we need here, we can then export this data. So say I just want to, I can either filter on my bookmarks and just export that data. I could be selective and select, um, you know, just maybe this subset of data. I can right click then and create report export. Right now for the timeline, you can only do a CSV export. Um, we are looking at expanding that uh, in future releases, but for this version right now, um, you can do a full case report for everything else, but the CSV uh, is limited to uh, the timeline. So we'll add CSV here, selected items 13 and hit create. 
It'll export that to a CSV. It'll take just a second to create it. And then we can actually view this in here. You can continue to work on it. You can incorporate it into your master case or your, uh, uh, your full case report, um, however you want to do it. But CSV is uh, probably the most common output that uh, most people would ask for here. So we'll open it up in uh, uh, Excel. And again, you can, most people are familiar with this. You can get a nice CSV export of all the details um, that you might want to uh, go through here. So um, very helpful. That's, uh, that's, Timeline in a nutshell, we're really happy with how this uh, has changed. You can allow you to view all the timestamps across file system artifacts and the amount of timestamps we get uh, in our artifacts is, uh, is significant. So the, you'll, you'll see a ton of different uh, timestamps there and uh, the ability to manipulate this and, and filter and, and sort this data through uh, is really exciting. So um, give it a try in your next case and uh, uh, I'm, I'm certain you're gonna be uh, really excited to, uh, to play around with it. So. That's everything I've got. Thanks for watching.